chatbots and large language models seem to be everywhere these days. We could totally use an LLM to build a recommendation system, but hallucinations keep causing issues. So how can we make a high quality recommendation system without hallucinations? Keras Recommenders has your back. Hi there, my name is Yufeng Guo, and today we're going to check out how you can use Keras Recommenders to create a reliable and high-performing recommendation system. I'll be showing an example of movie recommendations based on a data set of movie reviews. Hopefully, we can get some useful movie suggestions. So, what is Keras Recommenders? Keras Recommenders is a Python library from the Keras team. And before you click away from this video because I said recommenders too many times, let's consider just how much these tools are shaping your everyday experiences on the web. Whether it's shopping online, looking at your social media feed, or browsing YouTube for videos, the need for high-performance recommendations is everywhere. You might see them disguised as suggestions, or you might like, or others shopped for, or similar to your interests. Think about the systems that you're developing. There are probably more than a few recommendation systems that could be involved to help improve your users' experiences and help them discover what they're looking for. To help you, the developer, create performant and accurate recommender systems, Keras Recommenders, or Keras RS for short, contains a set of building blocks designed for tasks such as ranking and retrieval. And since it's built on top of Keras 3, it shares many of the benefits, including compatibility with your choice of TensorFlow, JAX, or PyTorch. If you're ready to get started, you can find the documentation and examples at keras.io slash keras underscore rs. Installation is easy. It comes as a pip package. So you can run pip install keras dash rs to install keras recommenders. There are a number of excellent examples offered in the docs, with every example presented both as a web page and as a collab notebook that you can run. I'm going to be mostly working in the collab so we can see those interactive results, but you can also refer to the web page if you want to see existing example outputs. The example I'm going to take you through focuses on the task of sequential retrieval. This involves predicting the next item in a series of items. You might use this in creating recommendations for a user after they've browsed a handful of product listings on your retail shopping website or listen to some songs on your music streaming service, or perhaps watched some series of social media content. This particular implementation uses a gated recurrent unit, or GRU, which is a type of recurrent neural network unit to do the heavy lifting to predict that next item in the sequence. Okay, let's open up Colab. Make sure you connect to a runtime and you'll be ready to get started. First things first, we need to install Keras RS. Next, set your choice of backend for Keras and import the libraries that are being used. Keras offers three different backends to choose from, so you can choose either JAX, PyTorch, or TensorFlow, depending on your preference. Notice that we need to set this environment flag before importing Keras. This is very important, and if you want to then change backends in the future, you'll need to re-import Keras, having set your new flag value. We also need to set some top-level variables that describe some of the attributes of our data set, which is all about movies and their ratings by various users. We also set up some hyperparameters for our training running here as well. The next few sections that we'll cover will prepare and process the data set, create our model and train it, and then finally, make some predictions to see how we did. This dataset is the Movie Lens dataset, which has a ton of movie ratings. But we need to make sequences of movies for each user, ordered by timestamp. So there's still some work to be done here. Once we have the dataset downloaded, we load it into Pandas data frames for easy access and then create sequences for each user by creating a dictionary of user IDs 
and then mapping them to a list of their movie reviews. Each list gets sorted by timestamp so that we can have a nice ordered sequence of reviews for each user. But the work isn't over. To prepare it for training, we still need to process these review sequences further. The key insight here is that for each user, we can actually create multiple sequences of reviews by looking at an ever-expanding number of reviews in that user's sequence. This will help us give an abundance of training data. So for one example, we can use the first, say, three reviews as the context or input, and that fourth review is the label because that's what we want to predict. And then we can use the first four reviews as the context for the next example with the fifth review as that one's label, and so on, growing by one each time. It's kind of like the game of Snake. Each time we add a new review, it grows the length of the sequence for our next example. Then when we reach that last review, aka the most recent review, we can set that final one aside for our test data set to use to see how good our model is. This approach ensures that the test data set is the only place with the newest review, and it will never be exposed during training. The final steps in preparing the data set involve putting it into a suitable format and batching it up for training. We can see what one batch looks like here. And by slightly modifying the print statement, we can look more closely at just how the input data is created and structured. Notice how each example is just one more value tacked onto the end. The original sequence of reviews contained that full length version, but we were able to use it to generate a whole bunch of examples. And you can also see that the labels for this data also match perfectly as you expect to that next movie ID in the sequence. Okay, now we're ready to create the model architecture. The model has two towers, one for the historical movie sequences, which will utilize the GRU unit, and the other for candidate movies, which will be just an embedding table. We can see here that we use a special layer from Keras recommenders called brute force retrieval. And we'll set the candidate embeddings that it will choose from to be the second tower containing our labels or candidate movies. When the model runs predictions, it will use the retrieval layer we created to decode the query embeddings and grab those predictions for our outputs. The remaining code here is mostly standard Keras training code. We instantiate and compile the model and kick off training. So now it's time for the fun part, seeing the predictions. This code grabs some values from the test data set to see what the prediction yields. But you could also create your own sequence of your favorite movies and see if the predictions seem reasonable to you. So there you have it. Keras recommenders and a real model. That was just one example of the many that the Keras team created to help guide you on your journey in creating recommender systems. So if this one isn't right for your use case, I encourage you to check out some of the many other examples for more inspiration, including the deep and cross network, or perhaps the two tower embedding model for retrieval and ranking. What's your favorite recommendation or architecture? Share your thoughts in the comments below. And for more details and examples about Keras RS, see the expanded blog post I've linked below in the description. That's all for now. I'll catch you in the next one.